It is hard to deny that the Roman world was a very male-dominated environment. Life was harsh, physical strength and aggressiveness were integral in many aspects of life, and women were, unfortunately, relegated to a secondary role, not receiving much consideration on the main historical sources. That did not mean, however, that Roman society wasn't influenced by the women of its time. Outstanding women made very important marks on the history and politics of Rome throughout its history, through philanthropy, administration, education, and even on imperial politics. Many of them even had their own images placed on coinage. Today, we'll explore some of the empresses of ancient Rome and what the coinage of these Roman ladies has to tell us. Let's go! Social order in Rome was mainly maintained by a series of social programs and works of charity. And during the Golden Age of Rome, during the 2nd century AD, one of the biggest philanthropists of the city was the wife of Emperor Antoninus Pius, Faustina, known to us as Faustina the Elder. Her most famous social program was called Pule Faustinianae, or Faustina's Girls, aimed at helping poor and orphan girls as well as instructing them on some occupation that could make them more independent. Faustina, unfortunately, passed away at just 40 years of age. Her husband and the people of Rome were greatly grieving-stricken by her passing at 140 AD, and the massive issue of silver denarii celebrating her life was issued, the biggest issue bearing the face of a woman until that time. Our first coin is one of these, so let's take a look at it. On one side, we can see Faustina's bust, with her distinctive hairstyle, and the legends pr proclaiming her deification, Diva Faustina. The reverse celebrates her entrance to the eternal hall of deified Roman figures. We see Juno, the queen of the gods, with the legends, Eternitas, Eternity. I particularly love this coin, even if it's a common issue, it shows this lovely message from Rome to a notoriously likable character. We then move forward in time to Faustina's granddaughter, Lucilla. She was the sister of Emperor Commodus and would always have a very close relationship with her brother, being raised to the position of Augusta after marrying Lucius Verus, but would lose the title after Lucius's death. Lucilla would be among the first to detect a disturbing trend on Commodus' behavior which would pose a serious threat to the stability of Roman politics and the equilibrium of the empire. She would be among the first to embark on a plot to stop her brother, but the conspirators would be found and put to death, including Lucilla. The scenarios of her was struck from 164 to 166, while she still had the Empress title. We can see her bust facing right, with her hair tightly tied to a bun, with the legends Lucilla Augusta. The reverse features a curious allegory. This is Venus Victrix, or the victorious Venus. It is up to one's interpretation to what kind of message they wanted to pass by depicting Venus, an incarnation of all everything feminine, delicate and loving, loving. carrying a shield and a small victory on her hand symbols generally associated with conquest and aggression. We then enter the 3rd century, a time of major disturbances in the empire, but interestingly, also a time where many very influential and outstanding women also made their mark in history. One of them was Julia Domna, wife of the Emperor Septimius Severus and mother of the future emperors Caracalla and Geta. Julia Domna was probably one of the most active and involved empresses on public affairs the Romans ever had. Given the records of her many construction projects, accompanying her husband on every military campaign, and the multiple honorific titles she was given, after Severus's death, she was the only one capable of maintaining a feeble peace between her sons. But it would not last long, as despite her desperate pleads, Caracalla would murder Geta and reign as a sole emperor. This pretty denarius of her was struck at 214 AD, a 
and it's full of allusions to her busy and active attitude. The obverse features her bust with the legends Julia Pia Felix Augusta or Julia, dutiful, blessed Augusta. These titles were not given freely. You see, for an empress to be recognized as dutiful, she really had to be publicly recognized as such. The same for someone being pious. The reverse features Diana, the Roman version of Artemis, the goddess of the moon, the woods, and the countryside, carrying a torch with the legends Diana Lucifera. Lucifera, or she who brings the light, is quite an adequate allegory for a woman that was always out and about doing something. Apparently, Julia Domina was not the only example of active and powerful women on the family. The next coin features her niece, Julia Mamaya. If not as famous on the public eye as her aunt, Mamaya was probably the most powerful woman of the 3rd century, surpassing Domna, as she was directly in power of her son, the Emperor Alexander Severus. Alexander was raised to the position of emperor when he was merely 14, and the truth of the matter is that, even if he was a very well-educated and well-intentioned emperor, he simply lacked the strength and the personal presence to impose himself as a leading figure of an entire empire. Julia Mamaya then took the reins of the empire upon herself and a body of close advisors. Alexander could have been the face of the imperial institution, but in reality, Mamaya and her advisors were the ones leading the entire empire. She was an all-powerful empress in all but name, but the boy's inadequacy to handling power would cost them dearly, as both Julia and Alexander would be murdered by the army, disgruntled by his lack of fir firmness and fitness for power. This denarius of her was struck around the year 228 AD, and features a smiling bust of the empress, wearing a diadem. The legends are pretty simple, Julia Mamaya Augusta. She seems to be pretty satisf satisfied with herself. The reverse features a very typical piece of propaganda of the time, Felicitas Publica, the happiness and well-being of the people. We see the incarnation of happiness carrying a caduceus, the symbol of commerce. These were very troubled times, so a piece like that, reassuring to everyone that peace and stability were back, was indeed needed. And it looked like it. After all, Alexander Severus managed to reign with his mother for over 12 years, Quite a feat for the time. Now let's give a huge leap in time to 324 AD, where the next coin depicts a woman that according to history was essential to the conversion of the late Roman Empire into Christianity. Flavia Julia Helena, also known as Saint Helena, was the mother of Constantine the Great and credited as the first major defender of Christianity, even being credited for the conversion of Constantine himself. Helena possesses the stronger historical claim to have been the one to discover the true cross of Christ on her peregrinations, bringing it back to Constantine. On the obverse of this coin, we can see an elegant bust of Helena, decorated with a necklace and a pearl diadem, with the legends Flavia Helena Augusta. The reverse features Securitas, just like on the previous coin, a design aimed at reassuring the population that the empire was there to provide security and protection from all dangers. Securitas can be seen holding an, holding an olive branch, symbolizing peace. Something neat about these later Roman coins is the presence of the mint mark at the lower part, indicating where this coin was minted. In this case, it was at the city of Antioch. The legends read, Securitas Republicae, the safety of the Republic, which is slightly ironic, considering the Roman Empire was a mix between a monarchy and a military dictatorship for centuries now, and the idea of Republican control was merely just for show. The fall of Rome did not prevent the Empire from being gifted with outstanding women. Let's head to the East, where in the Byzantine Empire in 565, Emperor Justin II and his wife, Empress Sophia, rose to the power among financial difficulties and many, many wars. 
As a very educated administrator, Sophia helped Justin recover the truth on the imperial treasury, reforming taxation codes, tracking down on corruption, and improving imperial management overall. But the real moment for Sophia would come after Justin became mad, having a terrible nervous breakdown after many of his wars were going ter terribly. This coin features Sophia and Justin together as emperor and regent. Having a woman depicted on the depths of the Dark Ages speaks volumes to her importance. The legends translate to Our Lord Justin, Perpetual Emperor. We can see Justin sitting on the left, holding a globe crucifer, symbolizing his right to rule, and Sophia on the right, holding the imperial scepter, symbolizing she's the executive commander as a regent. The reverse gives us a series of informations. The big M in the center is the Greek equivalent to the number 40, the denomination 40 Numi. Nico, on the bottom, symbolizes the mint, the city of Nicomedia. And the combinations of Anno on the left and the Greek numbers on the right show the regnal year this coin was minted at. Collecting Roman empresses is a fascinating and underexplored niche of ancient numismatics people should consider. We tend to focus on the main emperors, but the truth is that, for as long as emperors minted coins, empresses also made their way into everyday coinage and had important contributions to history. So don't disregard these ladies, because if you want to have a representation of ancient everyday coinage, they were just part of everyday life. I've picked this particular theme this time because our sponsors at Savoca Coins are organizing their 94th Blue Auction next January 30 and 31st, 2021. And these coins featured are going to be up for sale. They're, they always have Roman empresses on their diverse selection of coins, but this particular auction is quite rich on Roman women, so definitely a great opportunity to expand your collection. And of course, if you are watching this video after the time of the auction, don't worry, just head over to savoca-coins.com as another interesting sale should definitely be happening soon, as they make multiple auctions per month. So how about you people? Have you got a coin featuring a Roman Empress on your collection? What is your favorite Roman Empress? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, so we can keep bringing interesting ancient coins to YouTube. We've just reached a thousand subscribers, and I would like to thank every single one of you guys for it. This is a major milestone for the channel. So, I hope you all stay safe, and have a great time. See you soon!